So, hello, uh, welcome. Thank you for being here so late. I know there is a beer event later, so it's good weather, beer, and on the other side is all these keywords here, buzzwords, so I will try not to keep you late. So we're going to talk about end-to-end -end, end -end machine learning pipelines, uh, how you can build these uh, with an open source platform, uh, which is called Hopsworks, and you can use tools like Beam, Flink, and TensorFlow. So a lot of keywords here. We will try to break this down as we go on. So the agenda, first, we will explain very, very briefly what is an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline. And then we are going to go in depth about what is Hopsworks, the open source platform, and uh, to understand a bit of the architecture and how we have bundled together a lot of different open source technologies, including Beam. And then we will explain in more detail how we, do, how we use the Beam portable uh, runner uh, with Python uh, and Flink in the platform. Then we will explain a bit uh, what is TensorFlow Extended, uh, which uses TensorFlow, and uh, TensorFlow Extended works on Beam to do some uh, data preparation and ML uh, pipelines. And finally, we will end with a demo. Um, that's it, so we can start. So what is an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline? Very, very briefly, the very abstract view. Uh, you can see that uh, it's a way to build, it's a, it's a way to transform, ingest, transform, prepare uh, data then it's a way to do machine learning on this data, and then you need to actually, the output of your machine learning uh, algorithm, uh, most typically a model, you want to serve it to your clients. So to do this, uh, you can have uh, the input can be a lot of different data. It can be raw data uh, from sensors, from mobile phones. It can be archive data. Maybe in a, you can have even a data lake. It can be on-prem. It can be in the cloud. Uh, doesn't really matter. So the first steps are data ingestion. You have to collect all this data, and you need to put it uh, somewhere in the platform, in somehow like a, let's say a buffer where you can collect this data then from with your uh, framework, your processing framework of preference, uh, Flink, Spark, Beam, whatever, and then you can do the data preparation in order to feed this data then into your uh, training uh, function. So here on this side, you mostly need compute power in terms of CPUs. Now, for uh, machine learning and deep learning, as well, lately, there has been a lot of uh, uh, development over there. Uh, you would need GPUs, and not just have like static uh, GPU allocation. You can have hundreds of GPUs, potentially. And uh, that happens not only just potentially. There are actual use cases for this. People are doing this. And then you need to have a multi-tenant environment where you can say, I want to use five GPUs for this user, 10 GPUs for that application, and then the resource manager here at the bottom will manage this for you. And then you continue with serving and monitoring because the output of this process, you need to, to give it to your clients to make uh, inference requests. And then you get new data. You need to run this pipeline again. And that, that's why it's called a pipeline. Uh, you schedule this to run uh, periodically or uh, at, uh, upon request. And uh, you need to do this continuous uh, process. And you need some software to automate this for you and make it easy for your data scientists. So what is Hopsworks now? Uh, the very uh, bird's eye view, let's say the abstract view, is uh, an open source platform for data intensive AI. So it's uh, a platform that gives your uh, data engineers and data scientists all the tools they need to implement such pipelines. Uh, so if we go a bit deeper, we can see that in Hopsworks you can do both batch and stream processing. And uh, you can have your data sources here. You go on the first layer. Then you can go in and do your ML with uh, distributed machine learning and deep learning with GPUs. And then you can do uh, your serving part uh, to serve your model. And if we go even deeper, we can see the actual technologies that you can use for these things. So for BATS, uh, Beam, and Spark, for streaming, uh, Beam, Spark, and uh, Flink. Uh, of course, Flink does both, but OK, it specializes mostly in streaming. But OK, I should put Flink also there, my bad. Uh, the feature store, uh, we will explain uh, a bit later briefly what it is. It's a, store, it's a place to store your curated feature data after you have done your feature engineering. And then you can feed this into your distributed ML um, a part of your pipeline. So then your data scientists can use Python usually, and they use uh, libraries and frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, scikit-learn, and then they Im implement these things by using Jupyter Notebooks, 
and then they do serving uh, in the platform with uh, Kubernetes. So to do all this, you need a distributed file system which can cope with all uh, the load and the amount of uh, big, uh, the files and the amount of big data in the in the platform. So for that, we have HopsFS. HopsFS is a, a let's say a drop-in replacement of Apache Hadoop, and we started this project almost seven years ago, and we managed to take Hadoop, we forked it, and we fixed some things that, let's say, were issues, traditional uh, issues in Hadoop, like the, the name node bottleneck, small files, so we fixed all these. We have our own architecture with distributed metadata now. So what you can do is actually have stateless name nodes, so you can do a lot more operations than traditional uh, Hadoop data lakes. We have over one million operations per second that you can do. Uh, with HopsFS, and you can uh, also have small files in the metadata layer. That means files that are like, you can configure it, but it can be, for example, less than 64 kilobytes or 128. You can store it in the metadata layer in a database. And that's a lot faster if you want it, than going to the file system. That's even, that's a lot faster uh, for data sets in ML where they use a lot of uh, images. It's very important. And all this is done securely by using uh, uh, multi-tenants in a single cluster. Uh, project-based multi-tenancy with TLS certificates, we will explain a bit later. And um, uh, yes, and you can plug this next to your already existing data lake, uh, or you can replace your data lake with this. And a bit of uh, yeah, the timeline I just described about the HOPS FS file system, we won some awards for this, like the small files, multi-data center availability for HOPS FS, so you can now have the distributed file system in many um, in uh, different availability zones and have consistency. And now uh, support for uh, running uh, the first platform, uh, open source platform to provide uh, TFX on BIM on-prem. Now what is project-based multi-tenancy? Uh, there is one way to do multi-tenancy and that is to spin up different clusters, to have your uh, applications and jobs, and then uh, you need to but then you kind of have isolation between your clusters. What we do, you have one cluster, and then the, uh, we have, due to our distributed metadata, you can have project-based uh, multi-tenancy. That means you have users and data sets and, and jobs, okay, applications. A grouping, uh, you can draw a line around these entities, and you draw a project, basically. So we have one project here with two users and uh, two data sets, uh, resources and the Kafka topic. Kafka topics are also uh, resources in the data sets in, uh, not re they are resources in, the, in Hopsworks. Or you can draw another line around these two users. Or you can draw another arbitrary line around all these users. Every user in a project have their own I identity. They don't see this, this is transparent to the user. But the projects are isolated but on the same cluster. And uh, if people want to write some applications on top of uh, Hopsworks, and also our front end uh, can be considered an application for Hopsworks, we have a REST API uh, to manage the projects, data sets, uh, all the resources of, the, of Hopsworks users, the feature store, Kafka. So, and the API is fully documented uh, with uh, Swagger, and it's also published on Swagger Hub every time we do a release. And now I give it to Ahmad to continue a bit with Beam. Hey, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, probably you already saw this figure many times today, so I'm not going to spend uh, much time explaining it, but uh, I just want to mention that the idea to give uh, these users up there the freedom to choose uh, the language they like, the, the language they prefer to write the, to Beam pipelines, and then to take these pipelines and execute it on the platform that they prefer is a, a very attractive idea, as you saw in many of the talks earlier today. Uh, and it's not only allowing them to write uh, the Beam pipelines, but it also bring, allows them to bring uh, all the libraries that they prefer in their language that they want, and also allow them to write user-defined function in the language they like, and uh, this is going to be executed using these uh, executors on, on the language uh, that they choose. And uh, for Hopsworks as a uh, machine learning, uh, scalable machine learning platform, this is, uh, idea is very attractive also because, uh, as you know, uh, most of the machine learning libraries and most of the uh, data scientists, they prefer to use, for example, uh, uh, Python to write uh, their code. 
and uh, to be scalable and um, able to run uh, on large data sets, uh, probably want to use uh, something like Flink. Uh, and uh, now with Beam, we can uh, achieve that. And this is what we are trying to describe in the rest of the slides, how we managed to do that. So in Hops, we provide uh, Beam as a service. Uh, so what you can do is that you can uh, develop Beam pipelines in Python uh, using uh, Jupyter Notebooks uh, inside the Hops platform. We also provide you, uh, like it's a, a self-service platform where uh, we provide you lots of tools that simplify uh, lots of the operations that you need to do. For example, uh, regarding deploying Flink clusters. So for each project can deploy its own Flink cluster, for example, if it wants to. Um, and uh, uh, also provide lots of uh, services to manage the life cycle of, for example, uh, the job service of, of Beam that you use to submit your bi pipelines to, to. We also manage this job service. Um, we also uh, provide the SDK worker that's going to execute the user code file. You can customize it with your own Conda environments to include uh, the libraries that you need in your project. And we provide a scalable execution using uh, Flink. So this is a summary of uh, Beam as a service, and uh, we are going to uh, explain more details of uh, these points. And uh, this is a screenshot. It shows you the Hopsworks uh, platform. Uh, and uh, inside it, you can see that this is a, a, a Apache Beam uh, interface of a cluster uh, related to a, a specific project. And then inside, you can, maybe you don't see, but <laughs> like, uh, it's a Beam, Beam jobs uh, are, going, are, are launched in the uh, Flink cluster, Python Beam jobs uh, uh, being launched here. And we will show it in the demo later at the end of the presentation. Uh, also, Hopsworks provide uh, uh, API to help you in uh, programming. So we have uh, uh, two a uh, APIs now, one Hops Util Py for Python and uh, Hops Util Java for uh, Java. And they simplify uh, uh, the, when you are writing your uh, applications for Hopsworks. Uh, um, for example, to set uh, security, because in, uh, uh, Hopsworks is a secure platform, uh, Theo is going to explain later. And it helps you, for example, uh, set the TLS um, certificates. And uh, also, we allow you to discover different services that, uh, through the code, you can discover different services in the cluster. As an example, you can discover, uh, for example, Kaf Kafka brokers, where they are, to, and the end, different endpoints. Uh, uh, you can also, and everything you can do from the UI, you can access through the REST API through the code, for example, to get information about what are the jobs that are currently running or query any status of the uh, Hops platforms. You can do it through the, sorry, through the REST API, and you can also uh, set up uh, machine learning experiments and uh, monitor it and, and control it through these ML experiments. For Beam, we also added an extra service to manage the Beam uh, job service. The, so the job service is the one you submit your pipelines to, so to be executed. Uh, so from code in your project, you can start this job service and uh, link it to the Flink cluster you want and uh, give it information about uh, where the artifacts are going to be uh, stored in HDFS and also uh, give the jars that are going to be used to uh, run uh, the, the, the job server. So you can all, all these tools help you when you are going to develop your uh, Beam pipelines. And then when it comes to um, managing uh, uh, user code, so this SDK worker or SDK harness is a, a program that's going to uh, execute all the user or user-defined functions that uh, you write in your Beam pipeline, in, for example, in Python, uh, when it's going to be executed, for example, on Flink, which is Java-based. So this SDK worker is the program provided by the SDK of the language you choose that is going to execute all the user-defined functions. Uh, so where do you execute this uh, program? So there are like two uh, ways to do it. Either you put it inside a Docker container, uh, or uh, you run it directly as a process on the servers. Um, each of them have advantages and disadvantages. So when it comes to Docker, you need to uh, build a container for each of your projects. 
you start with a basic container provided by Beam, and then you add your own requirements, the libraries, extra libraries that you want to use in your uh, functions that you are going to execute. Uh, so all, all of this needs to be included in the image. And if you want to do any modification, you need to build, rebuild the container, and then you need also a kind of a, a repository for Docker images to store the images and then download them whenever you want to execute any of the user-defined functions. So there are some maybe overheads. On the other hand, if you are going to use the process approach, when it comes to managing the dependencies, you need to install all the Python uh, packages that you want to use. You must install it in all the servers. And uh, you must manage all the dependencies. And uh, whenever you want to update, you need to update this library or modify something. You need to do it on all the servers. Uh, so the, uh, the disadvantage when it comes to Docker is that it, yeah, you need some additional infrastructure components. So if you don't use Docker, you need to install it. And uh, it's a bit slower to manage the life cycle. And when it comes to the process, is a challenge how to do with multi-tenancy, how to do with project to different requirements, who is going to manage it. But uh, in Hopsworks, we luckily we already have support natively for Python. And how it's done in, in, in Hopsworks that you uh, through the interface for each project. So for each project, we create a Conda environment. And uh, you can see from your interface for each project what are the uh, Python libraries installed. And you can search both in Conda and pip for any additional libraries you want. And then uh, you can also export your environment. So if you want to repeat some experiment or you want to read some execution, you can have the same exact uh, versions. And then uh, the Hopsworks Hops work, itself manages installing all these Python libraries on all the servers and keeps them, them in sync. Uh, and this way, when you want to run uh, uh, your Beam pipeline and you have a user-defined function in Python, then the executor is going to be started with this Conda environment, and then it will have access to all the libraries, and it will be easy, much easier if you want to update, for example, a library just to go in through the UI change the version and reinstall it, and then it will be available for your uh, Beam uh, pipeline immediately. Uh, we also support Jupyter. So in the Hopsworks interface, you can start, uh, you have a Jupyter support where you can start a Jupyter server and uh, configure with any additional libraries you want to, uh, sorry, additional code and configuration that you want. Uh, and this is an example of the, uh, running a Beam pipeline. So you can see here, if we define the pipeline options, you define, for example, you use a portable runner, you define HDFS configuration, uh, and you are running in a process mode. We will uh, show it in the demo, and this is that uh, Chicago Taxi example we will, that we will demo at the end. And uh, in addition on running uh, notebooks uh, in an interactive mode, so notebooks are used to running interactive code, like you run a cell, see the output, after you are happy with it, uh, we have an additional feature that you can convert it to a job. So it's a, it will be a hops job. And then it can be managed with the Airflow. And this happens by taking the notebook, convert it to Python files through NB convert. It's a feature in uh, uh, Jupyter. And store it in uh, HDFS. And then hops can, uh, through Airflow, can uh, manage to run multiple notebooks as an airflow pipeline, as we will also hopefully show you at the end. Uh, OK, so Theo will continue explaining some more about the architecture details. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've seen this slide uh, quite a lot of times uh, today. Uh, it's become, becoming quite popular, and it's a very good uh, uh, layout, a uh, very good slide. So this is the architecture for uh, the uh, Python uh, for Beam portability. And uh, here we can see the amendment, the modifications that we have done to, for this to fit into our uh, platform. So here, as you can see, uh, well, the laser died. Oh, no, it's here. Uh, you can see staging location, for example. It can be DFS, S3. Etc. So we use HOPSFS, which is the HDFS uh, drop-in replacement. And here, the job service uh, to convert your Python code into Flink, uh, into Flink tasks, a uh, Flink job that will be submitted to the Flink cluster, runs either locally, where you'd actually type your, Python, your Jupyter notebook, or you can also run 
this thing in, a, in Yarn, and we run this in actually a PySpark uh, uh, job. Uh, so you have PySpark and then you have the job service, but PySpark is really used for orchestration there, just to allocate the container mostly. Or uh, Kubernetes, we're adding support for this now. So for example, you have the job service that will be executed and, um, in a uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster. So then uh, also you can see this whole thing. We run, you can run multiple Flink uh, session clusters in Hopsworks, and they run on, uh, at the moment they run on uh, Yarn. So if we continue, we can see that this job service is, uh, is, uh, is shipped together with HopsUtilPy, our uh, helper uh, module, which, actually, uh, which starts the job service. And job service is compiled with HopsFS dependencies because we need a job service uh, and here the workers to be able to access um, HopsFS. Then instead of just starting the job service uh, manually from command line, you have this helper method here where you start the job service. Let's say it's in the cluster somewhere. You get back the address of the job service, which you can use later on when you define your uh, beam pipeline. And here, the important part is that the SDK uh, worker, uh, the Python one in this case, will use the conda environment that we'll find locally on each machine and the conda environment of the project for which this job is, uh, this Flink session cluster actually is running. Because a Flink session cluster in Hopsworks, it is just a job. So logging, if you see this picture here, you need to do some housekeeping. So there is a lot of uh, logs being uh, output. So you have the job service logs, which are quite useful to see how your jobs are being submitted to Flink uh, cluster. You, can have you have logs from SDK worker, and if something happens there uh, with the Python uh, code, uh, you have to actually go in the container and get the logs. Um, also, you get the logs from the Flink session cluster itself. Okay, so to do all this, um, we use uh, the Elk stack, which is the Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, and Kibana. So what happens is that we have FileBit uh, agents on all machines, and we have configured them to actually uh, uh, tail uh, logs that, uh, with specific, uh, with some patterns, and they recognize, okay, this file is for this project, for example. And they, they get the logs, they send them to Logstash, and then Logstash parses them. It has the, like the grok filters, and then it sends it to Elastic. So you have Elastic uh, search indexes per project. One index for the SDK worker, one for um, the job service, et cetera, one for the Flink session cluster, and that's how uh, you do it. Because otherwise, for cleanup, which is very important, you don't want these services also to be running forever. The job service at some point will shut down because it will be cleaned up by the Yarn container uh, itself. Uh, so you lose the logs, basically, but you have them in Elasticsearch now, and you can access it. We will show it in the demo later from within the project. Now, this is a screenshot, but uh, hopefully we will not need it because we will do the demo. But this is how it looks in Hopsworks. We have uh, Kibana here, and then you can view, uh, you can select your index from here, and then you can view the logs. Now, this example is from the job service, I think. Yes, I think so. Yeah. So security, uh, because this is nice, <laughs> but you have to make things secure because people, OK, sometimes are malicious. So you log in the platform uh, by, uh, with either with a username and password that you get when you register with Hopsworks, or you, uh, you can log in with uh, LDAP, and uh, we also have OAuth2 support. And when you log in, for example, uh, you get back a, a JSON web token here, which you can use as an API key to make REST calls against Hopsworks. So you don't even have to worry about the front end. You can have a client. You can work locally on your laptop. You can type your uh, Flink Beam code. And then you can say, I want to submit this to, to Hopsworks. OK, you get your key, your uh, API key, and then you can use this to make REST calls like upload this jar file, run this job, monitor this job, or cancel it, upload data. You can do whatever. Then once you're in the platform, we use TLS certificates uh, among the services. And we use project-specific project specific certificates here uh, when the users run applications. And also, we have another extra uh, new feature with application-specific certificates. So each job has its own short-lived TLS certificate. And then when uh, the job is finished, the certificate is revoked. This is very useful for doing provenance. So you know which files uh, also we have support for this in the file system is uh, good for provenance. You know which files each application access, not just which user. 
Um, and this uh, whole idea uh, has been inspired by, of course, uh, other people have done this, uh, like Netflix with the Bless system, and uh, Google has done this, uh, I think, um, internally. They published a blog uh, at some point. So TFX. Now, we explained how we run Beam on Hopsworks, and Ahmad uh, showed a bit of that. We explained what is Hopsworks, and so we are going towards building the end-to-end -end ML pipeline. But we need the last missing part, um, which is the Python components that will allow us to do that. And TensorFlow Extended is one of them. It runs on Beam, but you need to type Python. I, you need to have a Python program. Another portability framework is a very good addition in Beam, so we, we use that to, to build the pipeline. So here, this is another very popular slide. I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, we have the reference here. So this is the hidden technical debt in machine learning systems. You need to do all these other things like preparation, feature engineering, the monitoring, whatever I explained. And after you have done all this, you can actually give your data scientist a robust, scalable environment where they can actually have some, a notebook or something similar and type their uh, code using a, an ML library. So you have to do all this before you go into this uh, step. Now, how TensorFlow Extended fits uh, in this uh, picture? So it's, TensorFlow Extended is a set of components built around TensorFlow. And you can do uh, all the steps that you need to build the pipeline. You can do data ingestion, uh, validation with these components that you want to drop uh, duplicate rows or you want to drop some rows that don't fit your schema or something. Then you can transform uh, uh, entire columns uh, from strings to integers or something like that. And after you've done this, you can actually train uh, your neural network, train your model, as we say. And after you've done this, this is pure TensorFlow here. After you've done this, you go in model analysis. You need to see if your model, uh, how it performs. Uh, uh, also to validate it that it's correct, actually. That's why it's here. And then monitor it and do the serving part. Now, in Hopsworks, uh, we use TFX mostly for data validation and data transform uh, with Beam on uh, Flink and Python. Uh, so the users type their Python Beam pipeline. It's, it is submitted, as we saw before, in the cluster. And then uh, and they get back the result in the notebook. So this happens for validation, transform, and model analysis. Now, for training, uh, Hopsworks, uh, one of the key features is that it is able to do, uh, it provides support for doing distributed deep learning at scale and with multiple GPUs. Uh, we use GPUs as a resource. Uh, so you have CPUs, memory, and then you, you can request, I want five GPUs for this job, I want 10 for that other one. Hopsworks will manage resource allocation for all the jobs among all the users, among all the projects, on the cluster. So we have Hopsworks with a GPU and TensorFlow. And for serving, we use Kubernetes. So you can spin up and down different uh, TF serving instances. And you can manage this from within Hopsworks from the user interface. Now, a bit about distributed deep learning um, in Hopsworks. So again, we use PySpark as, let's say, the orchestrator there. Uh, users, users don't see Spark at all in there. Uh, you have just the driver and the executors, and then you have the staging, let's say, environment, the file system. You have access to your tensor board. We will show it during the demo. It's uh, this monitoring tool for TensorFlow to see how uh, to figure uh, program and uh, model serving. So, and we provide HopsUtilPy as well, which is uh, which gives you all the libraries to do what data scientists really want. They want an easy way to do experiments, to do parallel experiments on um, many different hyperparameters. They want, you want to do hyperparameter search, and then once you decided which ones you want, you can scale out and go on the cluster and say, OK, I want 100 GPUs, and I want to schedule this to happen every hour or so, every day. Uh, yeah, so the tensor, we have integration for TensorBow, and we have experiments in Hopsworks, so you can have repeatable experiments. You run the experiments, let's say, last week, Monday, and then you want to run it again tomorrow. You need to know on which data you run the experiments, which code you used, like the notebook, and things like this. So you can go back in the Hopsworks dashboard and do that. So this is how it looks. For example, this is TensorBoard, what you see here in Hopsworks. You, ho you have the experiments service here. And then um, you can go in the experiments, select, and we'll show it in the demo as well. Orchestration, the last part, uh, we use Apache Airflow for this. So here is an example of the Chicago taxi uh, example, which uh, 
is on GitHub on the TFX uh, page, and we use this for the demo today. We have adapted it to, for Hopsworks here for, for this demo. And you can uh, schedule Airflow. Uh, you can instruct it when to run your jobs and all that. And here is an example of the pipeline. These are the tasks. These are actual notebooks in Hopsworks that have been converted into jobs. And then you instruct Airflow, OK, run this. And it's scheduled to run like uh, here. And then you can monitor the progress. So putting it all together, the last uh, slide before the demo, this is the big one. Uh, you, ha you remember the initial end-to-end -end ML pipeline we had in the beginning? Now, this is the same one, but with all the technologies that we just described. OK, you have your input data here. OK, I don't need to repeat this. And we have Kafka for data ingestion. So Kafka as a service in Hopsworks. You have it within your project. You can create topics with authorization, project-based authorization as well. And um, then you can have your data preparation, which is where we use. Uh, you can use Spark or now. You can use Beam uh, with uh, TFX and Flink. Also for the transform, we have the feature store as well as an alternative. And for training, we use TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras. You can use whichever Python library you want. And we provide for uh, some of them, we, do the, uh, we provide the APIs to do distributed deep learning with GPUs. And then the model analysis you can also do with TFX, serving with Kubernetes. And then you can have your applications here making requests to serving. And we monitor the serving part with Kafka and Spark uh, streaming. So you, you, need to view, you need to get logs of your serving, and you need to monitor uh, the progress. And the metadata store is the uh, distributed metadata that we have in the file system. Very quickly, uh, these are the versions we have used. So you see Hopsworks. This will be in the next Hopsworks uh, release. And we use the latest ones, Beam, Flink, TensorFlow, TFX, etc. So demo time. Ahmad uh, will start. OK, so let's run the demo. Uh, so the demo, we are running it on a single, like we're simulating a data center on a single VM running in Sweden. So it might be a bit slow, but uh, let's see. OK, so this is the, uh, so when you go to the Hops website, you, you will give uh, with this interface where you have some um, list of projects that you have. So we already have a project here. So when you click on the uh, project, um, it will open. Uh, so let's say you want to run a beam pipeline. So the first thing you want to do, you want to start a, a, a Flink cluster. So then you can go to the Jobs tab. Uh, I already created a job that will uh, launch a Flink, uh, Flink session. So it's called the Flink session. So I can just press on Run. So this is uh, spinning up a Flink uh, session on uh, top of Yarn on a, the, on, a, on, a, on a cluster. And now it's uh, running. Uh, I can click on this icon, and it will show me eventually <laughs> eventual consistency. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, just uh, uh, click again. Okay. We have. Okay. Let me let me see if I have Wi-Fi here. Ah, maybe it's. Uh, uh, ah. No, oh, it's a. Uh, Yeah, we, we have a backup VM. Well, something goes, something's off with the network. OK, so uh, we start the Flink uh, session. And, uh, and then you, you can see that uh, now it's uh, up. Uh, but uh, yeah, nothing is running yet on it. Uh, you can also uh, manage your data sets from here. So you can manage all the data in, uh, and share data between projects and uh, users, so all of this supported. So here we have the text taxi. We're we are going to show the Chicago taxi example from uh, TensorFlow Extended. Uh, for example, we have uh, the data here. 
the evaluation and training data already on, on uh, uh, you can see it's already on HDFS. Uh, and also you can see that there is a Python here, so you can uh, uh, check what is uh, installed and uh, install new libraries by, by typing here and searching and selecting the version that you want and install it. And this will be uh, installed on the uh, environment for this specific uh, uh, user. Then you can uh, go to uh, Jupyter and uh, uh, you can open the, the, your Jupyter interface. And it will show all the notebooks that you've created. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is the Chicago Taxi uh, notebook. Here you see, see some of the, uh, uh, so now we have the Flink cluster. We need also the, the job uh, service that is going to submit. You, but you can do that from the code here. So if we run this cell, it's going to start a, a Beam job service. And it prints to you, okay, it's running on this host, and this is the port. So all of this you can do from code. And then uh, you need to link it to the Flink uh, cluster because it's going to submit, take, take the pipeline from you, convert it to uh, Beam, uh, Flink specific pipeline, and submit it to the uh, Flink cluster. And you do that by using the uh, job name that is running the Flink cluster. So this is how it linked. And, and the platform automatically gets the ports and uh, set it up for you. Uh, uh, so now we continue here, we see uh, coming, cleaning up the data. Here we set the, some of the settings, like for example, the HDFS and the portable runner, it's running in a process, all of these settings here. And this is the f first cell that is going to really, uh, sorry, really going to run on, on Beam. So now when we run this, if we go back, here and open the uh, Flink UI. Ah, so already came out. So now we see it's running. So this is the, uh, from the Jupyter notebook, we started a Beam pipeline. And this is the user uh, defined code running inside the. Uh, worker, beam worker inside of Flink. It's a bit complicated, but yeah. yeah. So now it's running. It uh, takes a few seconds. Um, and then when, when it, uh, maybe we don't have to wait for it to run, it will finish and then you get the, uh, you can continue showing the visualization and, and the rest of the notebook, it will be the same, but yeah, maybe then you explain the, Next part. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is one single notebook that turns the entire pipeline. But the point here is that you want to schedule things. You want to break them down into smaller components. Uh, and you want to do this with uh, an orchestrator, in this case, Airflow. So what happens, we have provided here, we've broken down these notebooks, and all the steps like uh, compute statistics for the preparation part, here pre-process, you can do training, and then the model analysis. It's, they are different notebooks. So. Um, we start taking from the main one, and we split them here. And what you can do, you can go to Airflow here. It's part of your project. It's a multi-tenant uh, service in Hopsworks. And here is your pipeline. So here you, had, you have defined the tasks the, that you want to run, compute statistics, etc. And to do that, also, you have to go to jobs, and you have created a new job. Uh, and the input here is a Jupyter Notebook. So you point it to a notebook, it automatically converts it into a Python uh, job, and it runs it on the cluster. So if you make a change in the notebook, after you created the job, it's OK. It will, create, it will convert it again, and then you can run the same job. So you can go back to Airflow. For example, I can, start, I can just trigger the pipeline. We don't have to wait. We're out of time. So we, um, yeah, you say on. And then you can just trigger it, and then it will, uh, based on the schedule you have provided, it will keep running it forever. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, so this will eventually uh, start. This is the first uh, notebook. So Airflow, when it picks up uh, 
uh, my command, it will go there and just trigger the job. And you can actually monitor this by going in the pipeline. And then you can view all your tasks and the graph view. So here it says running. So let's go back to Hopsworks, and you can see that the job actually started running, and it will continue running all the rest. Hello? Uh, yeah, so yeah, it will go to the Flink UI, yes. We saw this before. So uh, last thing is the, the logs. So you can go to logs. Yep. It's slow. Yeah. No, not today. OK. Um, my internet just failed, probably. Next time, uh, roaming 4G. OK, so that's pretty much the demo. Uh, we can go back to the slides just to finish the summary. So the summary is that Hopsworks, the next version, uh, will be end of August probably, uh, will be the first op on-prem uh, open source platform to provide all this uh, functionality, building Python ML pipelines with Beam and the Flink runner. And uh, future work is actually to do this also with a Spark runner because it was mentioned also before in the keynotes. And there is a, there is a talk tomorrow as well that uh, there is now support for uh, Spark Runner in batch mode at least, so most of this should work as well. And also future work is to export metrics in InflexDB and uh, Grafana for Flink. And thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we are running over time, so I will just open the floor for one question, one burning question that someone in the audience may have. Okay, there we go. And then we'll have to wrap up. Hey guys, uh, thanks. Um, how does uh, this uh, Hopsworks system compare to uh, Kubeflow? So, okay. so uh, Kubeflow uh, provides uh, the machine learning, uh, let's say, uh, framework provides the components to do, to build the pipelines, uh, so it's similar to the APIs we provide to do to run the experiments, for example, to do the distributed training, uh, uh, all these things. But the, here you get the entire platform. You get the file system, you get uh, the logs, you get project-based multi-tenancy on the same cluster. That is, uh, so uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Kubeflow is just let's say, a subset of what you get here. Uh, maybe they have richer APIs, yeah, uh, for uh, the ML part. Um, but here you get the entire stack, from file system to resource management to ingestion to distributed deep learning. OK, thank you so much. Um, we're going to wrap up this session, but we are going to have the networking session right after so we can continue these conversations. So, thank you.